Public Television presents the following program in high definition. to my kitchen. Today we're going to make a beautiful salad of crisp romaine lettuce, gorgeous sherry beef, and creamy cabales cheese, followed by caldo gallego, a hearty meal in a pot. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshall, brand names for less. And by All Clad Metal Crafters. All Clad is bonded construction. All Clad is innovative design. All Clad is professional equipment. All Clad is a state of mind. And by Brillo with Oxy Action. For toughnesses, Oxy Micro Bubbles lift and dissolve beast and grime. Brillo, cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years. Caldo Gallego. Every country has their meal in a pot. Caldo Gallego belongs to Spain. It's comprised of a delicious, rich broth. Then you have different cuts of meat. And then we add garbanzos, either potatoes or cabbage, and chard. I learned to make caldo gallego from my mother's good friend, Maria. We used to call her Maria la Española because there were so many, so many Marias. I had, I had Tia Marias, I had cousins Maria, I had Marias all over the place. So my mother's friend Maria became Maria la Española. Maria was an incredible little spit of a woman who came from Madrid. She was so amazing. She maybe measured in at five feet with high heels on, and she had these dark, flashy little eyes. And there was nothing, I was convinced, that Maria couldn't do. Uh, I would come home from school, and uh, I would find Maria and my mother laying tile floors in my house, or uh, reupholding furniture. One of the other things that Maria did was she taught my mother to make Spanish food from Spain. Thank you, Maria. I'm going to today by making caldo gallego for you. I'm going to start out with a piece of slab bacon. We're going to take the skin off, and all that entails really is just working a little corner up and off. And then I can grab it with one of my paper towels, and it'll come right off. There we go. And I'm going to start that at a medium-low heat. While I'm doing that, I'm going to tie up this piece of chuck, which is a piece of meat that I think lends itself beautifully to caldo gallego. I don't want it to fall apart. I'd like to be able to cut it in pieces after it's cooked and serve it with my vegetables and my garbanzos. So let me season the meat while this is just browning a little bit. And this whole process is going to give the bottom of my pan a gorgeous golden crust. And once we pour our broth in, it picks up all of those caramelized flavors. OK. And I'm starting to get just a little bit of shine there. Okay, I think the bottom of the pan is nice and hot. Love that sound. And while that's happening, I can show you a pork butt comes whole. And we're going to brown this as well. And all of these are going to add their own little element to the caldo. The bacon and the ham hock that I have here are going to add a lovely smokiness to the caldo, which I happen to love. This is also a dish I can tell you that you have to be patient with it. It's going to take a while to cook. Okay, you can see we have some very pretty color on the chuck, on the butt, and on the bacon. And I'm going to come over to the sink now. And I have some garbanzos here that I started soaking last night. You'll hear me say that you can cook your beans two hours before you're ready to serve them without a problem. Garbanzos are the exception to that rule. They take a little more patience, but I really think they're worth the effort. I'm going to add them. And I'm going to add my chicken broth. OK, beautiful. 
and my meat is not covered, I'm going to go ahead and get some more water. And I'm not worried about sacrificing flavor or diluting the broth because that chicken broth is rich already. With the addition of all these other different meats, it's going to be phenomenal, which is what we want. Now I'm going to bring the heat up to high. I'm going to add a bay leaf and my ham hock. Once the broth comes to a boil, we'll have the formation of this foam up on the top, and I'll be scooping that out as the caldo simmers so that byproduct of protein breakdown doesn't get mixed up in the broth, which will muddy the taste and cloud the caldo. And we'll continue to do this periodically as it comes to the boil. Once it comes to the boil, we'll lower it to a simmer and then eye on it for about one and a half, two hours. The caldo has come to a boil already, and you can see the amount of foam that I've taken out already. It, it forms rather quickly. Very cool. I've got some beets and some potatoes over here by my sink, and I'm going to wash these potatoes. I got these, these really cute little potatoes because I'll be able to drop them into my caldo gallego hole, and then just like mash them into the bottom of my plate with my fork, and then have the meat and the potatoes and the garbanzos and my greens. Okay, I'm just going to set those aside and I'm going to take care of these beets. If you manage to find beets with beautiful greens like this, they're really delicious, braised or sautéed. What I'm going to do is scrub these with a little towel because they come from underground, you know, so we can expect there to be a little dirt and you don't want any grit when you finally eat these. A word of caution when handling beets. If you decide to peel them before you cook them, make sure that you, you wear gloves or you'll be walking around with henna hands for uh, a number of days. And I don't know if you can see, but I haven't even started cooking them and already I'm getting pigment on my fingers. Okay, so enough water to cover. And then I'm going to set this over here, give it some heat, add a little bit of salt. And while that's happening, I have some beautiful, pristine, tender Swiss chard. I'm going to go ahead and just take the stem ends, and we can add them, but I just like the leaves by themselves. Swiss chard is a vegetable that I don't think gets anywhere near the amount of play it deserves. It's delicious braised, it's delicious sautéed, it's delicious like this in a super stew. So I'm just going to roll them to keep them in place and cut them in ribbons. I like chard because it holds, you can cook it. Also delicious in something like this kale. It's a nice hearty leaf that doesn't disappear when it hits the hot broth. I have all this lovely shard, put it right over here. This looks really pretty. The yellow of the garbanzos and the pink of the meat and the green of the shard. It's a comfy, warm, delicious dish. And I'm going to add those right there. One last skim, and I'm going to time it so that the meat and the vegetables will be ready together. This is a dish that cooks for a while, and I don't want to rush anything. so. Uh, let's just leave this. I'll finish roasting the beets, and uh, maybe we'll put our salad together. We're going to make a lovely salad with romaine lettuce, some sherried beets, and a beautiful cabrales cheese, a Spanish blue, that I had on my fabulous trip to España, and was just so impressed with the simplicity of the salad, but how beautifully the tastes all came together. So let's get to it. I have a head of lettuce. I'm just here, but I'm just going to go ahead like the big leaves, we're going to pull these apart, and then I'll just trim the big rib off the outer leaves. The tender inner leaves we can leave whole. And just swish them around. Make sure that they get a lot of play in the water so you don't get any sand in your salad. I was never a very big blue cheese person. When I went to Spain and started trying some of those blues, I became a quick convert. That was for sure. OK, and these are nice and tiny, so I'm just going to shake them off and bring them up here. You just tear bite-sized pieces. You could add something like candied almonds to something like this would be lovely, or even pecans. And we're going to give this um, salad a couple of spins. I bought my mother one of these. She was amazed. She would sit there with a towel. And you're, it's amazing the amount of water you're able to remove from the salad. And it really does make a difference. OK, I boiled these beets about 30 to 45 minutes. I test them for doneness. You want it to be soft enough for your knife to plunge into. Once they're ready, I let them cool. You know, you could let them cool overnight, really. You could do them beforehand. And once you boil them, the skin comes right off. And I always, always wear gloves. Otherwise, I'm walking around with red fingers for the rest of the week. I'm very lucky. My children eat pretty much anything. My daughter, when we went to Spain, the first tapas bar that we went to, 
she ordered snails. And the waiter kind of looked at me and I said, that's what she asked for. Let the lady have what she asked for. And she loved them. Blue cheese is a hard sell. To get kids to eat blue cheese is a feat. They tried it and loved it, from the oldest to the youngest. And I'm going to trim my beets like in a little square. And these are really good. You can make them the night before, a day ahead. And once you dress them with the vinegar and the oil, you know, I'll have them for a snack. I mean, that's how much I love them. How pretty are they, my beets? OK, we've got beets. And I don't need these anymore. Now I'm going to dress them. This is where I start having fun. A little sprinkle of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little drizzle of olive oil, and some sherry vinegar. And just gently toss these. And it looks like, they look like jewels, don't they? Just how beautiful is that? So pretty. Wow. OK, and then I'm going to address my beautiful greens here. They're nice and crisp and gorgeous. And I could make my dressing in a little bowl on the side, but this is like a quick put together thing. I don't want the dressing saying a lot because it's about the blue cheese and the beets. But I do want for the leaves to have a nice glossy finish, so we'll add some pretty olive oil and a splash of white wine vinegar. And just toss. And salad is something you have to taste as you go along. Mmm, perfect. Gorgeous. OK. I'm getting happier by the moment. I have my beets. I'm just going to sprinkle them on top of my lettuce. Look how pretty that looks. And then I have my cabrales cheese. And I'm just going to take a little hunk off of that and crumble it over my salad. Cabrales has this little salty brininess to it almost. There it is. I have an absolutely gorgeous romaine lettuce salad with sherry beets and cabrales cheese. So the caldo is simmering, and we're just going to let it take a nap there for a few minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to take you guys over to the Essex Street Market in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. It's where Mommy and I used to go shopping for our Latin groceries while I was growing up. We lived in Staten Island, and of course there was no place on Staten Island to get the stuff my mom needed for her kitchen. So every Saturday, we drive in from Staten Island. My mom would drop the little ones off at my grandma's house in Brooklyn, and she would bring me so that I would schlep for her. And this is where we would come. We would spend the morning in the Marqueta, and we would end up in a stall that was very, very much like this. We would stack up, and I would be behind her schlepping bags, you know, and she'd be pointing this, this, and this. And we'd make two or three different trips back to the car and fill the trunk up. And then we'd go visit our Tia Maria, who lived across the street for a cafe. And then we would go back and pick up the kids and then go home. And we would have all the stuff that you needed for that week until next Saturday. And it was very, very much like this. It was, it was just like this. When we were shopping here, there was nothing you couldn't get here. You could get clothes, you could get sporting goods, you could get a tailor to hem your pants. You got your groceries, of course. And I wanted to point out these avocados, which are what avocados look like where I come from. Puerto Rican avocados are big. They're a little less buttery than the small Haas avocado. But this, along with a plate of rice and beans and a delicious fried pork chop, we're talking good eating. Okay, I'm going to show you some of these roots that you might not be real familiar with. Maduros, ready to go. These are the sweet plantains. If you touch them, they have a little give. The blacker the skin, the sweeter the maduro. So this is something that we have for breakfast, slice in little slices, just, you know, sort. And these are little green bananas. Not like you find in the supermarket before, you know, your bananas are ripe, but these really need to be green. And they're hard and they're not sweet, they're savory. And we have them as a side dish. This is jautia. And it's got all like these little pretty little flecks inside. When you find a jaltia that isn't open, my mother would very surreptitiously like stick her nail in one and take a look to make sure that it was nice and this nice white greeny color. And now it's like very cool to make chips out of these. Or you could serve it in slices, sauteed, or just boiled and dressed with a little olive oil. They're really, really delicious. And a great alternative to potatoes. My favorite viana is the juca. It's protected with this wax. It's dipped in wax and protected to keep the yuca fresh. They are so delicious. They're creamy, they're fluffy. The texture of the yuca is 
you love your potatoes again. It's the absolute most amazing thing. Good try. Look at the fish. Oh my God, look at the fish. They have stuff like tile fish, which is great for caldos, and things like whiting. You would get your own little fish, and you have to be real, real careful because all those little bones and everything. But our favorite at home was the chijo, the red snapper. They smell pretty. That's how you know the fish is fresh. And this is something that I always remember. Fish markets that I visit in my neighborhood don't feature fish heads, but that's something you'll always find in the Spanish markets because you get a nice, rich broth made with fish heads. This is too good to be true. These little jewels are guinepas, my absolute favorite snack when I was growing up. And these little green fruit you bite into and you have open kind of like, like, like you would a lychee nut and you have this beautiful, gorgeous, cantaloupe colored skin, sweet and juicy and it's got a real hard nut. So here's how you eat it. You kind of like, you crack the skin with your teeth and you open it up like this and there's your canepa. And then you kind of like, just you know, slips out of the skin and not a lot of meat, but God, what meat there is, it tastes like heaven. It's so good. Hi, Jeffrey. Good morning, welcome. Jeffrey, I am so excited. I haven't been here since I was maybe in my late teens. The Maquette has gone through many, many changes. Years ago, when my great-grandfather opened the store in 1929, it was a completely different community, and we sold different products. Now, as this market has changed, and the neighborhood has changed, through the years, we've made many, many changes to the people that live in the neighborhood and the types of products that we sell. I was just commenting on that. As a little kid in La Marqueta, going around and, and looking around, it was like, everybody get along. You had Chinese people speaking Spanish. It was incredible. You had... It was incredible. I mean, I'm a Jewish guy from Long Island. ¿Por qué yo hablo español? ¿Por qué yo hablo español perfecto? ¿Por qué la gente compra mi tienda? Habla español perfecto. ¿Por qué yo? Yo creo. Yeah, every people coming in the store, say, Jeffrey, ¿cómo tú hablas español? <laughs> Most Jewish people in Long Island speak perfect Spanish. I mean, it's a common thing. <laughs> well, you have a Chinese sign of here, Of course. Don't tell me you speak Chinese. Your son, Neahu. Oh, no, but that's no. all I know. I mean, that's really all I know. I mean, we got little spatterings of all the different things, and that's this has come in an international community. But the children don't buy the same way the parents buy. May I show you? Please. The Latin community has moved up. They're middle class. They're upper class. These are doctors, lawyers, professors. <laughs> they want what mom had, but they want the new things. Right. So, I mean, so we have unique items. Like, Boy, example, tell me you don't have venison over here. Young lady, I have venison in stock. And you have ostrich too? I have ostrich in I stock all the time. Stand it, we have right? quail in stock all the time. <laughs> and, and the Latin community is buying the ostrich, the venison, and quail. Also, yes. we have, which is a lot of fun, we have buffalo, elk, antelope, alligator, oh, no. caribou, kangaroo, oh, no, no, turtle, no, no. Okay. wild so boar, rattlesnake. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Jeffrey's on Essex Street and La Marqueta. You guys need to come down here. Thank you for stopping by. My caldo has been cooking for an hour and a half and it's really, really coming together. It looks great. The chuck is about 30 minutes away. The pork butt looks beautiful. The ham hock, I'm, I'm getting all this fragrance from it. The bacon looks beautiful. My garbanzos, they're done so pretty. They're just about to slip out of there. Mmm. They're actually creamy. That's how delicious they are. Fab. Okay, let's add these potatoes. I don't peel these potatoes because I just think they are so pristine and so pretty that they don't need to be peeled. If you don't like peels on your potatoes, go ahead and peel your potatoes. Or if you prefer little red potatoes, you can use those too. Okay, I'm just going to make a little room for these over here so that everybody is playing nicely in the pot. We're going to give these 15 minutes and then I'm going to add the shard and everything's going to come together at the same time. It'll be great. I've added a little water to replace all the skimming and the caldo is so rich at this point that it stands the water without a problem. And the potatoes have been in about 15 minutes and now I'm going to add some chard, that nice hard green we spoke about before. And I'm just going to work it in. It's going to melt right into this caldo. Chard is a nice hearty green. It'll take about 10 minutes to cook through and then we're going to come back and serve some caldo gallego. Okay, I have the meat here. It's nice and rested. It's cooled enough. And you can serve caldo gallego a number of different ways. The traditional way to serve caldo gallego is to serve the caldo first and then the meat course with the vegetables. Or you can serve it as a whole boiled dinner. Me, myself, I'm going to slice up some of the meat and pour myself some of the caldo and the vegetables. And I'm going to be very, very happy doing that. Look pretty. Here's my chuck. This is like, oh, so beautiful. I love this. When I serve this in my house, I slice the meats, 
and then put them all back into my pot and I bring the whole steaming thing out to my table. You know, if you like a little more chalk, if you like a little more bacon, everybody gets exactly what they want. Okay, and you'll notice that I've removed the ham hock, which is really only for flavor. And I have my pork butt. We'll have a slice of this. How pretty is that? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, and I have some beautiful potatoes and garbanzos and chard and caldo. Whew, does that look beautiful? It smells like heaven. And the caldo, I've just tasted it, it's so rich and so delicious. Wow. So while this is cooling for just a second, I'm gonna make myself a plate of this beautiful salad. Gorgeous and gorgeous. And then hearty soup, I think, calls for a nice hearty slice of bread. Okay, the fun starts now. I'm gonna taste. I have my beautiful salad, romaine with beets and cabrales. Mmm, delicious. Mm. The salad sings to me. I just love it. Look how gorgeous the color of that broth. It looks beautiful to me. Just dress the potatoes in a little bit with the olive oil and just let that float on top. <sighs> I'm ready. Cover me, I'm going in. Oh boy. Oh boy, I'll tell you what. Soup in a salad never tasted so good. Have some potato. God, this is so good. Mmm. Mmm. Have to have a little piece of this bread. The greens have added a nice fresh brightness to the caldo. The meats simmering have all lent their properties. The smoke of the hot, the sweetness of the bacon, and the butt. Mmm. The heartiness of the chuck. We have in my house a lot of things to thank Maria La Española for. How to lay a tile floor, how to make paella. I really have to say from my heart, thank you for teaching me to make caldo gallego. Buen provecho. Daisy Cooks, Latin flavors that will rock your world, is the full color hardcover companion cookbook to this series. To order, call 800-336-1917. Daisy's top 10 basics and over 200 of her detailed recipes are included in this 320-page book. The price is $29.95. You can order your copy of Daisy Cooks by calling the toll-free number or order online at her website, daisycooks.com. Hola, it's Daisy. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me at daisycooks.com. Tell me what you think. Sign up for my newsletter and get recipes and tips in English and Spanish. It's all at daisycooks.com. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great, Marshalls. Brand names for less. And by All Clad Metal Crafters. All Clad is bonded construction. All Clad is innovative design. All Clad is professional equipment. All Clad is a state of mind. And by Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, Oxy Micro Bubbles lift and dissolve grease and grime. Brillo, cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years.